Go on YouTube and let me know. You live right now. Fuck y'all, bitch! Give me the fucking back! Good? Mike, check, Mike, check. Go on YouTube and uh, where's the. Oh, praises. All oh, praises. It's good on YouTube. I'll oh, be good on YouTube. First and foremost, want to give. All praise is honor and glory to Yahweh. We do so by Shimon Mashiach Yahweh Shai. We are the Hebrew Israelites coming in week out to teach y'all the breakdowns, teach y'all the prophecies that America is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. All right. Thus saith the Lord. And America is a America's mystery Babylon. This place is soon to be destroyed. All right. But we have something powerful. We have Hezbollah bombing the hell out of Israel. And not only that, we have Iran sending drones to Israel. And what they say, what did they say? It's going to be for sure casualties. For sure casualties, right? So give me, give me Matthew chapter 24, rumors of war. Matthew chapter 24. And as you can see, somebody took his beer. Somebody ran off with his beer. Right? Well, he got demons on him. He need, he need to stop drinking that goddamn beer. Right? You understand? Our people got demons on them. Look at them. Right? So this is what we're out here to, to tell y'all about. It was rumored It was rumored that there was wars, but there's actual wars. Right? So read that, brother. This is the book of Matthew 24. Matthew what? 24, verse 7. Ma go ahead. Read it. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places all all these are the beginnings of sorrows all these are the beginning of sorrows all these wars you see brewing up in the americas all these all these wars you see in the middle east that's just the beginning of the end and finally we have iran doing what the bible says they were going to do and they've been doing it right Give me that article about Hezbollah, which is a proxy group funded by Iran. what they do? How many rockets did they shoot on Israel last night or in the wee hours of this morning? Right? Give me that article about Hezbollah. Read. Hezbollah is a Lebanese Shia Islamist political party and militant group led since 1992 by Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah. Hezbollah's Prime military wing is the Jihad Council and it's political. And they're anti, like anti small heads, right? You gotta be careful. Give me how they bombed them last night. Hezbollah, read. You, you can read it. Go ahead. Yeah, Hezbollah launches. This is the Times of Israel.com. Times of Israel, read. Hezbollah launches explosive laden drone, dozens of rockets at northern Israel. IDF says air defense intercepted two. UAV and some of the projectiles fired by the Iranian by the Iran backed Lebanese terror group. No injuries reported. No injuries reported. But you see the game heating up. You see the stakes getting higher and higher. So the missiles, huh? Ten people died. Okay, so ten people died. So now there's an update on the casualties, and there were casualties. So we got Hezbollah penetrating what Israel calls the Iron Dome, right? This place is finished. Now, America is the big brother to Israel, giving them about $5 billion in aid annually. But who's the big brother to Iran? Russia. How do we know that? The Bible says so. So give me give me that article about Iran sending drones. Oh, them drones will be there in about an hour or two. The drones will be there in about an hour or two, right? How do we know? Because Israeli defense ministry says so. The IDF says so. They, they guaranteed Israeli casualties. So those drones, the same drones that Russia was using against I, uh, Ukraine, those were Iranian drones. So those Iranian drones are now on their way to Israel to penetrate that, to penetrate that Iron Dome. Read. This is from foxnews.com. 
Iran launches drones towards Israel weeks after deadly Syria consulate strike. See that? Because what they did was they took out a couple of Iranian generals who were in Syria and other places. Iran ain't letting it slide. Iran ain't going. So this is this is a retaliatory attack, was what they're calling it. A retaliatory attack. And they plan on sending them drones to bomb the places where the IDF or Israeli are occupying that Gaza or Palestinian territory. Read. Iran launched drones from its own territory towards Israel late Saturday, days after its supreme leader warned it would hit back in response to an airstrike on the Iranian consulate in Syria. Now, those Iranian drones ain't nothing to play with, or else Russia, with their state-of-the-art technology, would not be having them. So I want you to, we gonna prove this in the Bible, that this is shaping up to be a fulfillment of biblical prophecy. Is this it? It could be. We don't know, but it sure is looking like it's shaping up and forming to fulfill biblical prophecy. Give me Ezekiel chapter 38, start at verse 1. You owe that in Jeremiah 51, right? And what happens when, when, what happens when Iran is success, successful with their attacks? America joins. What happens when America joins? Russia joins. World War III, Armageddon. Read. Here's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 38, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog in the land of Magog. Gog in the land of Magog. He don't want a flyer, man. He going to die in this war, man. He going to die in this war. Yeah. Hey, World War Three is happening, brother. What you going to do? You going to keep being out here a zombie, brother? You going to be the walking dead or just a talking head? So read. The chief of the prince of Meshach. And so we got Gog. Gog is the leader of Magog. And today, Gog, it would be Vladimir Putin. Magog is what? Russia. So that's who God is talking to. Read. And the prophecy against him. And say, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I am against thee, O Gog. So he's going to use the Russians, but he's still against them. Read. The chief, because he's only for the Israelites. Read. The chief prince of Meshach and Tabal. All Russian territory. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. So God is going to force Russia to intervene and to step in and get into this World War conflict. Even though they're fighting proxy right now, Russia's back in Iran, Iran's back in Hezbollah, Russia's back in Syria, and many other nations throughout the Levant, right? You heard of the BRIC, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. You got inductees, and also uh, those who got approved, I forget, but so many countries are joining with the BRICs so they can start this East versus West cataclysmic war. And I will bring thee forth and all thine army horses and all their armies world war three israel will be destroyed we horses and horsemen all of them clothed with all sorts of armor even a great company with bucklers and shields a great company this is why the euphrates river got to dry up to prepare the way for the kings of the east read all of them handling swords all of them handling sword. What is the modern day sword when you deal with the military? Missiles. Read. Persia. Who? Persia. Persia. That's Iran. See, didn't we tell you guys years and years ago, decades ago, and our elders before us that Iran was going to be a focal player in this world war? And now we see it shaping up to happen. Just like God said, the ancient name of Iran is Persia. Read. Ethiopia. Ethiopia. All you got to do. All you got to do is look up Russia and Ethiopia relations, and you'll see that that's Bible prophecy. Just a couple years ago, they, they started making deals and treaties and coming into a coalition with each other. Read, brother. And Libya. And Libya. All you got to do is look up Russia and North Africa relations, and you'll see that they're in cahoots with each other. Read. 
with them, all of them with shields and helmets, all of them ready for war. So when you see those drones finally make it to Israel, them Iranian drones, and you see Israel retaliate on Iran, and then you see Russia step in, then this just may be the fulfillment of what God told Ezekiel 2,500 years ago. Read verse 6. Gomer and all his band. Gomer, other parts of uh, the Russian territory with all his bands. Read. The house of Togamal uh -huh. and the north quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company. And you think they're not prepared? Oh, they're prepared. This is a strategic attack at the right time in the right place. Because God said, be thou prepared. So if you think Iran is just about to send these drones and launch these missiles without thinking about retaliation, thinking 10 steps ahead, God said, be prepared. Read. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled. And you think Russia didn't say, no, I don't do that. Russia said, do it. Read. And be thou on guard unto them. And be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee. And be thou on guard unto them. Be thou a guard unto them. Be thou a guard unto them. Russia is supposed to be a guard unto them. No doubt for the white man. No doubt for the white man. Russia is supposed to be a guard to these nations, the BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, the Irans, ancient kingdom, Persia, Afghanistan, North Africa, some of the East Africans. God said, be a guard unto them. So what you going, what you think they're going to do when Israel try to retaliate? Oh, Russia's going to have to get in there. But they might not want to, but God said he's going to force them to, man. You hurt? So drop that. Give me Jeremiah 51. We're going to get into the specific kingdoms that is going to have a part in the destruction of Israel, of America, which is Mystery Babylon. Give me Revelation 18, brother. Jeremiah 51 and 25. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 21 and verse Chapter 51 and verse 25. Read. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain. There's a destroying mountain. In the Bible, mountains represent kingdoms, empires, nations, countries. And no kingdom or country have destroyed more than America and the innocent blood that they have spilt all throughout the Ecclesiastes of this world. You understand? So therefore, America has hell to pay. Read. O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroys all the earth. Which destroys all the earth. Every single conflict in the earth is at the hands of America. Every, If you look at every major war and genocide on the earth, there's a breadcrumb of America being a part of it. Directly or indirectly, surreptitiously or clandestinely, covertly or overtly. Read. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks. So he's going to bring America down from the rocks, like the caves that these white people come from. Read. And will make thee a burnt mountain. Make him a what? A burnt mountain. mountain. A burnt mountain. This is showing you that this is not talking about ancient Babylon, because when Cyrus, the king of Persia, conquered ancient Babylon 2,400 years ago, 2,500 years ago. There was no war. They did not burn ancient Babylon. Read. This is modern-day Babylon, which is America. Read, brother. Verse 26. And they shall not and they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but thou shalt be desolate forever. Be, be desolate forever. See, this Babylon that's going to get destroyed it's going to be desolate forever, a perpetual waste, like the Bible said. Read. Saith the Lord, set, up ye, set ye up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet. Blow the trumpet. And that's what we're out here doing, blowing the trumpet and releasing the spirit of prophecy 
and the four spirits that stand before the Heavenly Father to go through the earth and force these countries to fulfill his prophecy. Read. Set up a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations. Get ready for war, nations. Read. Prepare the nations against her. Call together against her the kingdom, the kingdoms of Ararat. 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 What is the kingdom of Ararat that God said will come against this mystery future Babylon in the end times? The kingdom of Ararat is your modern day Turkey. Anybody can look this up. Anybody can look this up. How does Turkey feel about the Israeli Hamas conflict? Well, Turkey being an Islamic state, just like Palestine, is of course in coalition with Palestine, an anti-small hat. So they're rocking, even though they're a part of NATO, they're rocking with who? Hamas. They're supporting who? Well, one might argue not Hamas, but Palestine in general, right? Palestine. Read. So God is calling Turkey to destroy this place. How is Turkey going to destroy America if they're part of NATO? Get me Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. Let's prove some of the NATO forces are going to turn against America. Hate the whore and burn her with fire. Revelation 17, start at verse 12. Read. Revelation chapter 17, verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings. Ten kings talking about the common markets of Europe. This is NATO, where all these countries go back to, even if they split or another country birthed a smaller one. Read. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. So these ten countries, these ten kingdoms will come together as a coalition to form one body in NATO. That's the beast system. Read. These have one mind. They got one mind, or at least we thought they did, until we had the Brexit, the Gexit, and the Texit, meaning these kingdoms, these countries in NATO wanting to exit that NATO organization, the North Atlantic Treaty Org. org. Read. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So whatever, this is Article 5. This prophecy right here is describing Article 5 in the NATO legislation. What is Article 5 in NATO? If you attack one, you attack them all. They all got to go. Read. 14. This shall, these shall make war with the Lamb. These are going to try to fight against the Lamb. See, your Christian church isn't going to tell you this, that the world powers are going to try to fight against Christ. They never even heard this. They don't understand it. Neither do they give a damn. Read. And the Lamb shall overcome them. But who's going to overcome them? And the Lamb shall overcome them. You can have all the nuclear capability and drones you want. You will not overcome or be victorious over the one who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We'll name you our shy in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. Read. For he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. And they, they're going to take all the crowns of these nations. Read. And they that are with him are called the chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So Babylon and America is ruling the world in all these countries. And quite frankly, some of these semi-peripheral and peripheral countries are getting tired. And even some of the European Union and NATO are sick of America, man. Read. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, there shall hate the whore. They shall what? These shall hate the whore. The ten horns, America's own allies, are going to hate America because America is going to force them via Article 5 into a war that they cannot win. Therefore, they're going to switch sides. Read. And shall make her desolate. And make her what? Make her desolate and naked. So they're going to expose America and destroy this place to smithereens, man. 
All you people in America are going to die, man, by nuclear missiles, according to God and his holy Bible. Right? So you better enjoy this Saturday afternoon because your ass is grass, white man. Read. And shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Burn her with fire. How? Are they going to come pour, take a helicopter, drop gasoline on America, and then light a match? No. Missile, ICBM missiles, intercontinental ballistic missiles are going to get shot on America. Read. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. So it's all a part of God's will for this place to come crumbling down by way of their allies. So it said, get Revelation 18, back in Jeremiah 51. So it said that there's going to be a future Babylon that's going to be destroyed with fire and be desolate. That never happened in ancient Babylon. This is talking about the same Babylon in Revelation. Now, God gives one kingdom that is going to be a part of this destruction of America, the kingdom of Ararat, which is modern-day Turkey today. And we showed how Turkey is going to eventually turn against America in the prophecy. Keep going. Call together against her, the kingdom. Read, call it and read it. It's the book of Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 27. Set up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. Call together against her the kingdoms of Iraq. That's Turkey. Mini. The kingdom of Mini. Kashiyah, give me what's the kingdom of Mini. Anybody can look this up in Jeremiah 51 and 27. What is the kingdom of Mini? Just look at Google it. Google it. Put it in Google. Kingdom of Mini. M-I-N-N-I. -N -N -I. Now, we showed you in Ezekiel 38, Persia, which is Iran, was going to have a, a major part to play in the destruction of Israel and America. Now we're showing you in a second what is Jeremiah 51. The kingdom of Mini. It's Iran. Right? Keep going. And Ashkenaz. And what? And Ashkenaz. Ashkenaz. That's all part of the area of Ukraine. That was once all Russia. That was once all Russia. Due to expansion and civil war, you see a conflict between these countries. Now they have separated as different entities. Read. Appoint a captain against her. Cause the horses to come up as rough caterpillars. Verse 28. Prepare against her the nations. Now is it, here's more kingdoms that he, that he lists. Read. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes. The kings of the Medes also. What land is that? That's Russia territory. That's why it says the Medes and the Persians of the ancient world, they're coming together again. Ain't that crazy? The Medes, let, let me tell you how history repeats itself. The Medes and the Persians, they came together in the ancient world to destroy ancient Babylon. And God is so perfect and orderly that he's going to have that exact thing happen again today. The Medes and the Persians, the Russians and the Iranians are going to come together to destroy Babylon again today. Right? Read. Prepare against other nations with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And all the land of their dominion. Get me Isaiah chapter 13, verse 16. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 16. Let me see. Let me see your phone. Is it in the blue letter? So there we go. So when you look at the kingdom of Mini, if you do a cross reference in Jeremiah, this is for this is for edification for the people watching right now. Hit that like button too. Let's get the word out, man. The end of the world is here, and oh, what a time to be alive! Where the where the world powers are going to change. 
from white supremacy to Israelite supremacy. Right. Right. So the way Mene is spelled in Jeremiah 51 and 27, it's spelled a different way in the, in the other parts of the Bible. So this word is spelled differently. It's called morphology, but the lexicology is the same. Mene was an ancient kingdom located in where? Northwestern Iran. So yeah, God called the nations who he was going to destroy Israel and America. If I was you, I would go back to South India because America is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. Right. Haven't you heard of the brick? Brazil, Russia, India, and China, you seek geek? <laughs> Get me Isaiah 13 and uh, 16. Read. Who won the dialogue? Who, who you said wanted the dialogue? Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 16. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. That's what's going to happen. Their children shall be dashed to pieces. And understand when we say children, we're not talking about toddlers. We're talking about the parents mourning for their children in these militaries. They're going to be dashed to pieces. All oh, the military army, like the like the homosexuals they are, like the don't ask, don't tell, like they are, they are going to be destroyed when they get it, enter into this world war conflict. Hey, brother, hey, you better take that flyer. Your life depends on it. You're going to be destroyed if you don't take that flyer. Read that, brother. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravaged. And their, what? And their wives ravaged. That's what's going to happen. Just like they did. Give me Revelation 8. Drop that. Give me Revelation 18. Read. Behold, I will stir up the means against them. He's going to stir up the means now. I know everybody, even certain Israelites, thought Isaiah 13 was about ancient Babylon. You're wrong. I'll prove it through the Spirit of God. Read. Behold, I will stir up the means against them. The means. That's Russian territory. Read. Which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. So what did BRIC do? What did Russia and China do? They're trying to trade more with other currencies and drop the dollar bill. This fiat currency that is not backed by gold. This inflated mythological weight. Right? Read. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces. So these American military and the rest of this NATO military, they going to get dashed to pieces. Read. And they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not. They shall have no pity on little babies. These missiles, these meads. They're not going to have no pity when they drop these bombs over here and destroy your little babies just like you drop bombs. Hiroshima and Nagasaki and not just them on every other kingdom that does not conform to your white supremacy ideology and philosophy. Your false democracy. Bars. But it's true. Every kingdom that doesn't want to conform to America's democracy, oh, they want to bomb them. They want to go in and kill the king and the prince. And most of the time when you talk to the people, they say the one they were trying to, America was, was, was portraying as a dictator, was actually the hero of their, of their people. Read. And they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Read. Their eyes shall not spare children. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms. And America... Read, the beauty of the Chaldees excellence shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what's going to happen to America. It's going to be overthrown just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. Oh, and whether they hear or forbear, whether they believe or not, whether they believe or leave, it's going to come to pass. Right. Read, it shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be. See, that wasn't ancient Babylon. You can go there right now. This place is finished, man. Oh, and we thank the Most High God for being true to his word. Oh, why do you Israelites want war? Because the Lord is a man of war. Exodus 15 and 3. Give me that. Read. It shall never be inhabited. America shall what? Never be inhabited. This place is going to be a memorial, man. A memorial so we can tell all of our people, look what God did to this place for what they did to us. Read. 
This is the book of Exodus, chapter 15 and verse 3. Yeah. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a, what? The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Yeah. How is his name? Back in Isaiah 13, read. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch their tent. There's Arabians in ancient Babylon right now. But here, in this place, America, not one person is going to survive. God is going to destroy this place with thermonuclear destruction. Right? This melting pot of a, of a whore. This ethnic enclave. Read. Neither shall the Arabian pitch their tent there. Neither shall the shepherd make their fold there. See that? So we got the Bible pro prophesying, not even predicting, prophesying, ordaining the Most High is ordaining by his divine providence that Israel will be destroyed. That's Ezekiel 38, because it's going to have to get, matter of fact, give me Isaiah 61. Give me Isaiah 61. Also predicting, prophesying America's destruction and naming the countries and nations and kingdoms that's going to do it. Ain't no other book like the Bible, man. Read that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 55 and verse 11. Read out. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. See, this is what the Christians say, that God is going to change his mind, that God has blessed America and God loves America. God hates America. Ah, right. You understand that? All the babies that they legally kill, all the people that they systemically oppress, all the innocent blood and bones. You understand that? This is why America has to be destroyed. You understand that? You understand that, brother? God's going to destroy this place for what they did to you. You understand that? You from Chicago, right? What the fuck? You from Chicago? Yeah, how, how did you know I knew that? So who put the guns in Chicago? Who put the drugs in Chicago? Who put the crabs in the bucket? The goddamn white man. Read. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. So it's going to happen. Everything that's written in this book is going to happen has been happening and is happening somebody get me look Kashiyon, look up when them drones are supposed to get there we're going to do a countdown like it's goddamn 1999 That's right. they said it's going to take a couple of hours for them drones to get there but them drones are going to get there like big bear you understand that what we got you got more on that read and this will prosper into the in the thing where do i sent it and he sent his word out he sent the four spirits that stand before the Lord out. Get me. What did I have you getting? Revelation 18. Give me Isaiah. What did you What did you get? Isaiah 61. You get Isaiah 61, and then you get, um. I'll, I'll think about it in a second. I forgot. Go ahead. Isaiah 61 and 1. This is the book of Isaiah 61, verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath. Go to verse 6. Con. Verse 6. But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. So when we, when the Lord delivers the Israelites, oh, the priesthood is coming back. Then we'll be the priests, holy and clean, spot without blemish. Right? Read. The priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. See, now, right now, there are Gentile nations that say you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are God's chosen people. We learn from you guys. But this is going to be on a worldwide level when the people of this world acknowledge who the Israelites are. That's right. Right? We're going to count down like it's 1999 to these drones hit Israel. And we're going to get, who got liquor? A couple hours? A couple more hours. A couple more hours, I'm going to go live again. Get the liquor ready. Right? Read. Oh, we're going to, oh, we're going to dance like David dance. <laughs> oh, we pray America intervene so Russia can intervene. Because we already know. God has showed the prophets. Oh, oh, I love them. God has showed the prophets what was going to happen before it happened. And therefore, we're comfortable. We are comforted. This is our comforter. That's right. So we are comforted. Oh, we're excited. And we thank the Most High that his word is true. And we know what's going to happen in the end. There will be no more homosexuals walking the earth. 
Right. You understand that? Oh, you didn't know I knew it? It's showing all over your face, my man. Right. Read that, brother. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. Read. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. See that? Keep going right there. Oh, he's mad too. Oh, that he's mad too. A fruit loop gook. Now listen, at the same time, we are also going to rejoice at our people who did not want to repent. Who did not want to repent for their wickedness and abominations. So they're going to have to die right here with their oppressors. In the land of their captivity, they aren't going to make it into the promised land, man. Read. For your shame, ye shall have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be upon them. For I, the Lord, love judgment. What verse is that? Verse 8. Isaiah 61, verse 8. My bad. Verse four, Selakia, because we just want to prove that God said that Israel will be destroyed and have to be rebuilt. Right. And we know who the key players are who are against them in the Bible. So this is all throughout the Bible. Here's one example. Isaiah 61 and four, Selakia. The book of Isaiah 61, verse four. And they shall build the old uh, waste. waste. Sorry. They shall raise up the former desolations. Build the old waste cities. This is talking about when we get back to our land of Israel, that it's going to have to be rebuilt. He said it's going to be waste and desolate. <laughs> so that means that's going to have to happen during Armageddon or even before Armageddon. Read that, brother. And they shall repair the waste cities. So we... So we by way of sending these other nations or conquering these other nations and taking them into captivity, they will be rebuilding our kingdom, our glorious kingdom too. Brick and mortar. Gold brick and mortar. You understand? On a heathen's back. Read. The desolation of many generations. The desolation of many generations. So, parts of the land of Israel, the true land of Israel, because the white men over there don't even know the actual geographical ancient map and locations, the true locations. So some of our locations are desolate to this day and have been desolate for 2,000 years. But Israel will take, uh, 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 sustain, not even sustain, but uh, be involved in this nuclear war and missile attacks leading all the way up into the sixth trumpet where that's the thermonuclear destruction of the ICBM missiles hitting Mystery Babylon, a.k.a. America, to clean this place. This place needs to be cleaned by fire, America. It's so evil, wicked, and filthy. This place has to be destroyed completely. That's never right. to start again, never to rise again. You understand that? Give me Revelation 18 and 4. What God say? This is the book of Revelation, chapter 18 and verse 4. The book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Saying what? Babylon the great is fallen. Babylon, America is fallen. But this isn't just an economic fall. This isn't a, a, a infrastructure fall. This is a nuclear fallout, this place, America. That's going to happen. You believe that, white man? You believe America's going to be destroyed? You believe that? All right, well, stay here too. Stay here till it happens. That's right. Don't leave. Stop. Read. <laughs> Don't leave. <laughs> it's fallen and it's become the habitation of devils and the home of every foul spirit and cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So after this place is destroyed, right, possibly very soon here, we know the market of beasts have to be implemented, but very soon we want. America, remember, them drones are going to hit in a couple hours, right? We want America to intervene. And we want to see what Russia does. Huh? Because the Israeli prime minister or the Israeli official said there will the drones are coming to Israel from Iran and there will be casualties. Get that. Tasha, y'all get that where he said there will for sure be Israeli casualties. They understand that that Iron Dome is penetrable. 
by who? By certain countries who have adequate missile or drone. Go ahead. Verse 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. All nations <clears throat> have at some point, even if they disassociated with America, have at some point been in bed with the whore. Has popped the whore. That's what I said on my new album. I'm going to give you guys a bar from my new album. Babylon, the kind of whore to get popped till her vagina sore. And all you eat of mice getting to stink like the dinosaur. Read. For all nations have drunk up the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Uh -huh. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the, through the abundance of her delicacies. Keep going. First, well, watch, watch what we tell God. I know a lot of you guys, you Israelites, you thought that this was going to be us doing this, right? Now, the elect of Israel, we are going to be the battle axe, Lord willing, I'm one of them, the battle axe and weapons of war to these other nations when we get on these other nations. But there's some things that Christ alone is doing. He's coming to eat them, to destroy the Edomites together or by himself. He's doing that alone, right? Go ahead. And the most high going to do something alone. He going to uh, 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 have the Russian, the Brit, Brazil, Russia, India, and China and America's faulty allies shoot these missiles on this place. Right? Read. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come, up, come out of her, my people. So when does this happen? Give me Revelation 11 and 12. When are the elect from America, God's elect chosen, getting beamed up or 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 taken up when when is this going to happen right before the missiles read this is the book of revelations chapter 11 verse 12 and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them come up hither that's the chariots of god there's no other way out of here now if you decide to flee babylon the most high will catch you and get you there. You can't run from him. When you get to where he's going, he'll be there waiting for you. Read. Come up hither. You cannot run from Jesus. You cannot run from Jesus. <laughs> you remember that, Bob? When you get to where you're going, he'll be there waiting for you. Read. Come up hither. And they ascend unto heaven in a cloud. So the clouds represent the chariots. And that's what's going to happen before the missiles drop. The elect that are over before Brazil, Russia, India, China, Iran. Before they start gearing up and shooting these missiles, all oh, the elect is going to get a one-way ticket up out of here. One-way ticket up out of here. Read. And I heard another voice from heaven. Revelation 18 and 4. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. What are some of the sins of America? Still in this place from the, from the indigenous people of America? That's some of the sins of America. Still in this people from the indigenous Still in the still in the West Africans and bringing over here who are Israelites and having them build this country for 500 years, putting co putting constitution and legislative decrees out that systemically oppress us, and not just us, bombing the rest of these other countries. These are some of the sins of America, and America has not paid for their sins. If you reap what you sow, at some point, and we know what point, the point is, is when the sixth trumpet hits. That's when America's going to pay for her sins, this bitch known as America. Right? Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 13. Sit on that. You had a cool quote from old Biden, Sleepy Biden? Read. It says, in interviews over the weekend, President Biden said Israel Prime Minister Benjamin, whatever his name is, disregard for the innocent lives being lost amid his country's war with Hamas in the Gaza Strip was hurting Israel more than helping Israel. See that? Biden said all oh, this current conflict, this cleansing that they're trying to do with these with these Arab people, is hurting Israel more than helping them. 
So therefore, the cup is going to be filled up. Oh, man, it's going to be filled up. And they're going to have to drink it. Drink it down to what? Drink it down to the dregs, like the Bible said. Force it down. Right? Back in Revelation 18. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 18, verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. They're not getting away with what America, you're not getting away with this. And guess what? All this Israel, Israel and Palestine, this is just so America, the bigger fish can jump in and get fried by God. That's all this is. So the bigger fish can jump in and get fried by the most high. America being destroyed for their evil and wickedness, for their wicked decrees, for their wicked legislation and constitution, for the systemic oppression, for the rape, rob, murder, and genocide. For the oppression of all the melanated people on the earth, this white man got to go. The, can the cancer of the earth, the red dickhead, read. Verse 6, reward her even as she rewarded you. Do what? Reward her even as she rewarded you. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Right. So this place, the, same, the way they did that to us, it's going to be done to them. That's Bible, read. And double unto her. How much? And double unto, unto her. her. Not just what they did to us, but double what they did to us. Read. Double according to her works. And the cup which she had filled. The cup which she gave to us. Give me Obadiah 15. To her double. Filled to her double. Do you understand the severity and magnitude of what has to be coming to America double. If you take a look at everything they've done to us and everything they've done to everybody else, they have to get that and double. You're going down, white lady. Read that, brother. This is the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 15. No. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. The what? All, For, the, all the heathen. Read it from the top. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. So we get on the Edomites, Russia or the Edomites, Caucasians or the Edomites. But the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathens. You pompous, proud crackers. Read. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. They got a reward. I thought a reward was good. A reward ain't good sometimes. This reward that's coming to the white man is the same reward they gave the nations when they put them through perdition. What did you got? Read. This is the book of Obadiah 1, verse 16. For ye have drunk upon my holy mountain. They drunk upon the holy mountain, the Israelites. And that's why God is using Iran to go get them Revelation 2 Niners, to go get them Revelation 3 Niners. And we'll see if America steps in, and then we'll see if uh, Russia steps in, right? Yeah. Go ahead. So shall all the heathen drink continually. All the heathens have to continually drink. See, this proves that it's going to be more than just a thousand. After the thousand years of slavery, these kingdoms are still going to have to be servants and tributes and under the Israelites. They're going to have to drink continually. An uninterrupted kingdom the Israelites have to be served by the other nations. That's what God said. Read. Yay. Yay. They shall drink, and they shall swallow down. Meaning, even if they don't want. Even if they don't want. Give me Isaiah 60 and 12. Some of these nations may not want to serve the Israelites. Whether they see us in our glorified state or not, they would rather catch a bullet than to have to serve a Negro. So guess what? Give them the bullet. Isaiah 60 and 12. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 60 and verse 12. Bring it out. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. So if they don't want to serve the Israelites, they perish. Right. And they're going to see what happens in Obadiah. They're going to see how 
the northern kingdom and southern kingdom gather up the, the Edomites and burn them all till there's none left. And that's going to say, we have to serve the Israelites. Read. Obadiah 1, verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Oh, the whole world going to get delivered. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Because we are the only ones that need to be delivered. What do these other countries need to be delivered from? Oh, the Palestinians, they got the Arab countries sending drones right now. They got help. We didn't get that. Go ahead. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. So we get all their spoils. See, this is the beautiful thing about the prophecies. All of the robbery, the 4.7 trillion, and that's a low number, in free labor that they accumulated and stored up, all the gold that they stole from the indigenous people. They have, they have stored that up for the righteous. Don't the Bible say the, the riches of the wicked are stored up for the righteous? That has to happen. That's going to happen. So read. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. So the southern kingdom going to be going to set something on fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the northern kingdom going to set something on fire. Who they going to set on fire? And the house of Esau for stubble. And the house of Esau for stubble. That's who's getting set on fire. All you white people thought you were suntan. You white people, you love the suntan, right? Oh, you know, you, 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 he'd rather stay red, not orange. But you white people, y'all love the suntan. In that day, this is going to be a national suntan. They're going to get a, a, a national suntan by way of ICBM missiles. God said so. Right. America's going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction right. for the rape, rape, rob, and murder of the Israelites and the oppression of the rest of the world. Read that. We read. We just read Jeremiah. Come over here, white boy. Come on over here, white boy. No, you're right about that. You're right about that. You're right about that. From one end of the earth to the other. The judgment is coming on this place. The plagues, the trumpets, the vials, the seals. Yeah, matter of fact, give me um Zechariah chapter one. Give me Zechariah chapter one. Talk about the brick. Because that's what's happening. Brazil, Russia, India, and China is backing. All of these uh, uh, smaller countries inducting them, approving them to be a part of the BRIC organization. East versus the West. I'm going to keep looking at my phone until them drones get to Israel. I'm going to keep looking at my phone until them drones hit that iron dome. I'm going to keep looking at my phone until them drones hit that iron dome. Damn it, we almost home. Oh, praises to the most high. Oh, <laughs> Read, bro. That's not funny. Read. Book of Obadiah 1, verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. So these nations are going to be stubble, man. Not just Esau, but the rest of the nations. That's what's going to happen. Give me that about the brick. Give me the prophecy about the brick in the Bible. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 18. You mean a prophecy about the brick in the Bible? Y'all thought it was... Now, this war did die down. I, I wouldn't even say the war died down. They just stopped covering it. They stopped getting into the nitty-gritty of what was happening in the war. And now it done bubbled back up with the rocket launching, with the rockets launching last night. Or, uh, I'm sorry, early this morning. And then Iran sending drones to Israel. How you feel about that, man? Iran sending drones to Israel. Okay. 
How does the world feel about World War III bringing on the brick? But this is what the Bible said. Just like, give me that, uh, just like in the days of Noah. They were eating, drinking, and marrying. Now, some of, the, some of this place is going to be in mourning, of course, because the plagues have to happen. But right before the plagues start to happen, all the world, the world is going to be just going along to get along, happy, acting like nothing's happening. Because what it is is a human being. The Bible says, why is earth and ashes proud? Human beings are just proud. They think it's on their own convolution that they're alive. And so they want to experience life. They don't want to think about the end of the world. So therefore, they neglect to hear. And they're ignorant of what's happening. That's why the Bible says these humans are like sheeple, like sheep led to the slaughter. How you feel about Iran about to destroy Israel? Right? What you guys got right there, man? What's that? Oh, you guys got menus? What's this, a Japanese restaurant? Dog over rice? Dog over a bed of rice? Read. <laughs> this, is the book of, this is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 18. Not, they knew not to hand us them. <laughs> they knew. They had, they had a new Japanese restaurant, Chinese restaurant. They passing out menus. They knew. Don't give that. We know the difference. We know what's chicken and what's dog. We know that shit don't be chicken that you guys be having. That be dog over a bed of rice. Read that, brother. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 18. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them. My bad, Zachariah, Selachia. This way, back this way. Oh, it's, oh, right there. There we go, Zachariah. He was already there. He knew the brick prophecy, right? This is the countdown to when them drones hit Israel. I'm going to be looking at my phone until them drones hit that iron dome because it's almost time to go home. Read, brother. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 1 and verse 18. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, behold, four horns. Four horns. Yeah, that's it. Four horns. Read that. And who are these four horns? What are a part of the sin? There are four of the same horns we see in Revelation and Daniel, specifically Britain, Spain, which also acted with Portugal, France, America. These are the four horns, the four key players of NATO and EU, the four key players of the transatlantic slave trade and the conquest of the Americas. Let's not forget about the, our indigenous brothers. Did you know that Russia in Ethiopia were prophesied to be together in war against America in the Bible? You knew that? You're Ethiopian, right? How do you think I knew that? Eritrean, Ethiopia, Somalia. Okay. You're Catholic? Orthodox. Okay. You was raised Orthodox. So how you feel about this morning Iran launched a, we're going to call it a treasure trove, because it's a treasure trove for us. A treasure trove, a myriad of drones to the way of Israel's dome. And a retaliatory attack for them killing Iranian generals in Syria. They're not letting it slide. Your best bet will be to go back to Eritrea. Because if you are here in America, God only has you here to fry by way of thermonuclear destruction, unless you're an Israelite, one of the elect keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Read. It's the book of Zephaniah, chapter 1 and verse 19. Read it's, the book of, uh, like, it's the book of Zechariah, chapter 1 and verse 19. So we got the four horns. Keep going. And and I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be these? 
So he said, what are these four horns? Read. And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. That's very important. These four horns scattered Judah, the, the southern kingdom, Israel, the northern kingdom, and our land, and took our land. All those four horns were a part of that. Conquering the indigenous people of the Americas. Taking the southern kingdom in slavery from West Africa over here. The diaspora of both of those people. And then the scattering or the parting of that land with the Balfour Declaration. Mm -mm -mm. The devil. Read. Verse 20. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Whoa. So now the Lord is showing Zechariah four carpenters. When you look at this word of carpenter in the Hebrew, it's the word for smith or artificer, denoting what? Nuclear capabilities. And the brick have that. Four carpenters. And before it was Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, it was called the Big Four. The brick was called the Big Four. It still is called the Big Four. Because every other country inducted and approved is lesser than Brazil, Russia, India, and China. So we got brick prophesied in the Bible. And the only way that brick format, uh, uh, um, the only way that brick even came to existence was to be opposed to the four horns, which are the key players of NATO. There would be no brick if NATO didn't exist. So that's here in prophecy. The big four, what they gonna do? Verse 21, then I said, what come these to do? What are these four carpenters gonna do? What is the brick gonna do? What is the big four gonna do? And he spake saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. But these are come, these are come to fray them. To these are come to fray them. That means to destroy them, man. So we can comfortably say, if there's a brick versus NATO war, that brick's gonna win, because the Bible said so. We know the end from the beginning. Why? Because God gave us the spirit to unlock his prophecies in his word. Read. These are the horns with that scattered Judas and that no man did lift up his head. But these are come to fray them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles. To take down their horns, to take down their powers. When you catch an animal, that's a powerful animal that has horns, you break the horns. That's a symbol that you conquered that animal. So to, to cast out the horns is to take their power. Now, after that, Russia will be the world power for a short time period until they decide to collectively fight against the Messiah. And that is when they're going to be completely eviscerated and evaporated. That's what 2nd Ezra 13 says. Give me that 2nd Ezra 13. Yeah, I saw nothing but smoke and dust. That's the type of concentrated fire that the Most High is coming with when he destroys his nation. Look at how cyclical things are. Cyclical. God is going to use Russia to destroy America. Then he's going to destroy Russia. And then he used America to punish us. And then he's going to destroy America. And so God's judgment is like a ring. You heard? What you got? Still there? Second is 13 and... Start at verse uh, Start at verse 1. Second Ezra 13 and 1. And the inspired text. Read. It's the book of Second Ezra, chapter 13, verse 1. And it came to pass, after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea, that it moved all the waves, therefore. And I beheld. That destroying wind. The Bible talks about a destroying wind. 
Read. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong. That man is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Read that, brother. That man waxed strong with the thousands of heavens. With all the angels and his elect men. Right? Hey, man, I see you got a cross on. You want to talk about the gospel? You want to talk about the gospel? Yeah, you got a cross on. You want to talk about the gospel? Okay, so uh, what's your what's your ethnicity, man? Hispanic. You're Hispanic? On your mom or dad's side? Both. Both, okay. Have you ever heard that God had a chosen people? Yeah. Yeah. Who are his chosen people? Israelites. Where are the Israelites today? Who are the Gentiles? Are the Gentiles in Israel today or are those Israelites in Israel today? Okay, but I'm asking them this. Are the Gentiles in Israel today or are those Israelites in, in Israel today? Yeah. Are those Gentiles in the land of Israel? Gentiles or non-Israelites? I would say both. Both? Okay. See, the chosen people of the Bible are so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. We are the real Israelites that the Bible speaks of. So you got a cross on your neck, but you need to know what that represents. First of all, that's idolatry. God didn't tell us to make a graven image to worship it. You understand that? But you, if you are in fact, go back to the indigenous people of the Americas, you would be an Israelite, God's chosen people. So you know that Iran is at war, I'm sorry, that uh, Israel is at war with Hamas, right? You know that, right? Do you know that that is biblical prophecy? That there will always be war there until the real Israelites get there? Give me Isaiah 60 and 17. I'm going to give you a couple of things to think about and pray about. Because we're at the end of the world. The last of the trumpets. The beginning of the vials and seals. So you got to do something so that you don't part, get, uh, uh, get caught up in the judgment that comes on America for its wickedness and its satanic devices. Give me Isaiah 60 and 17, verse 18. Come on, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, 60, verse 18. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Violence shall no more be heard in the land of Israel. Is there violence over there right now, brother? There's violence over there right now. Because the real Israelites are not there. Read. Wasting nor destructions within thy borders, but there shall call thy walls salvation, and they and thy gates praise. Praise. See that? Give this brother a flyer. Give him a flyer. Hey, I'm telling you, this is this might be your last warning. God, God works in mysterious ways, man. All right, you stopped and heard the gospel, so maybe the Lord will have some mercy on you. All right, look up Hebrew Israelites. All right, man. See, God is gonna warn our people. It said the gospel will be preached to the four corners of the earth. Then the end will come. So you will have no excuses on Judgment Day when you're sitting there like, oh, Lord, I didn't know. Bop! Off with his head. You heard that? Come over here, man. Come on, dude. See, you can't be afraid of the Most High God, man. See, fear is not a part of the plan when it comes to choosing the Most High. You fear the white man. We already fear our oppressors. We can't fear the most high in the sense of coming to him and repenting, my brother. Lose your life so that you can gain your life. Lose your life so that you can gain your life. Hold on a second. Well, yeah, but we don't just rock out. You got a charger for that? You do? See that? So it's our job and our duty. Give me Isaiah 58 and 1. We're going to come back to uh, Zachary, uh, Zachary, um, 2nd Ezra 13 and show you that these world powers are going to try to fight against the most high son who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who is not no white man. We know the Messiah was not no cracker. The Jews in the first century were called Negro. That's Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Right. Read that in Isaiah 58. We're just warning our people. And we got to warn the heathens too. That's right. 
not to repent, but that they're going to get spent. Read. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression. So we got to lift up our voice like a trumpet to show our people how they're in error, how the Christian church has taught them lies, how they have not kept God's law, statutes, and commandments in order for us to be delivered out of our current condition. Right? It's high time to repent for salvation is nigh and the end of the world is at hand. I'm going to keep looking at my phone. I'm going to keep looking at my phone until them drones hit that dome. Because we almost home, man. Are you an indigenous? Are you an indigenous to this land? Are you indigenous to this land? Are you a so-called Latino? Okay. So give him a flyer. Give him a flyer. If you're a Latino, then God wants you to repent and come back to his law, statutes, and commandments, man. That's right. Stop following after your oppressors. Because this place is finished. Right? What's up? No, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right? So, whether they hear or they forbear, we got to get a message. And Iran's drones are on the way to the Iron Dome. You say, what? Come over here, man. Which God? Which God? Read. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13, verse 1. Uh -huh. And it came to pass, after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And, lo, there arose a wind from the sea, that it moved all the waves, therefore. And I beheld, and, lo. How you doing? How you doing, black people? All right, my brother. You know, you know their drones are on the way to uh, Israel right now, right? World War III. Don't let her take you from that. You, we don't want... Hey. Hey, but it's about to come to a culmination. We don't want you to die in it. Don't ever let no woman do that to you, brother. Come on, stand on business. All right. Our, 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 we can't let no women pull us up the block when it's God's word coming out, man. You see that? Hey, what's going on, man? What you got right there? What the flyers are, man? Japanese restaurant? Come over here real quick. Read, brother. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13, verse 3. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he... That's the Messiah that's coming to judge this place, America, and all the world powers. Right? Yeah, we got Russia destroying America. We got Iran about to bomb Israel. But we have the Most High sending his son to destroy all these nations. To make his enemies his footstool. Why is it that Christians say, give me Psalms 110. Why is it that Christians say Jesus loves everybody, but it says he's coming back to make his enemies his footstool? Make it make sense. Psalms chapter 110 verse 1. Read that, brother. A Psalm of David. 110 and 1. Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 110 and verse 1. You know, the Lord said unto my the Lord said unto my Lord. So Yahweh is talking to Yahweh Shai. The Father is talking to the Son. What did he say? Sit thou at my right hand. Sit at my right hand until what? Until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Sit at my right hand in heaven until I send you in the end of the world to crush all these nations, and all these nations are your enemies. Oh, but I thought he loved them and wanted to save them. Read. Verse 2. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. How you feel about Israel about to be bombed by Iran? How you feel about that? You don't believe it? So wait, the news said it, though. You don't believe in the news? Oh, so, oh okay, so you don't believe in war. 
So you don't believe in the white man then? Ah, got you, huh? Because he's the biggest warmonger on the earth, sister. It's going to be like that to the end until he's taken out the way, right? He's the cancer of the earth, right? Come on, sister. Don't be afraid to say it. Bring it out. Speak the real. Hey, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Know who your enemy is and know who the elephant in the room. Know who put the crabs in the bucket. You understand that? So go ahead. The Lord shall say, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 110, verse 2. Why is everybody passing out stuff today? What is going on? What's up with all this soliciting? Right? Don't want to hand us nothing. They know where the spirit of the Lord is. There's a hedge of protection right here. There's the lion's den that they're scared to come in. Right? Talk about it, brother. Read. Second Ezra 13, verse 3. And behold, I it's lucky, and I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. So when they see him crack the clouds, they're going to be trembling. Oh, they thought it was some white homosexual with a with a with a with a shaggy perm, but they're gonna see an angry, melanated man of color, a so-called Negro, glorious in his apparel, red in his apparel from all from already destroying the Edomites, and oh, the world's gonna tremble. Read verse four. And whosoever the voice went out of his mouth, they all burned and heard his voice like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. He's coming to take the crowns of these nations who the world calls Jesus Christ. And the first people that Jesus Christ is going to kill when he comes back are Caucasians, Edomites. Why? Because they deserve it. They're the most evil. They're the most wicked. Give me Malachi. Give me Romans 9 and 13. No, give me Hebrews 12 and 16. Give me Malachi chapter 1, verse 3. Who is the most evil of the nations? Who is God's worst enemy? Because y'all, give me Psalms 83. Who is God's worst enemy? Who is he coming back to get, get first? After that, give me Isaiah 63. Who is his worst enemy? Who is he coming back to kill first? Did I just say that? Because I don't like white people, or is that Bible? Give me Isaiah 63 first. Yeah, give me Isaiah 63. Hold that. Hebrews 12. Psalms 83. Go ahead. 63 and 1. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 63 and verse 1. Who is that coming? Who is this that comes from Edom? Who is this coming from Edom? That's Edom right there. Your Esau. Read. With dyed garments from Basra. With dyed garments. Remember, in heaven he had a white glorious garment. Then it turned red from killing whites. Read. Oh this that is this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness. Mighty to save. Mighty to save. That is the son of man. And who did, what was his first stop? Edom, where the Edomites are. Hey, brother, how you doing, man? What's going on, bro, with that Adidas? How you rocking Adidas with Nikes, brother? Come over here real quick. Adidas suit, Adidas, Adidas track suit with Nikes on. He needs to hear the gospel. Because he, he ain't got no motion. He needs to hear the gospel. He might as well get saved today. So that's it on that. So his first stop, Jesus Christ's first stop, is to kill all the Edomites. That's Isaiah 63. Who are the Edomites today? The Caucasian men. Give me out of Hebrews 12. Is the book is the book of Hebrews 12, verse 16. Who was he coming to kill first? Who was his worst enemy? Read. Lest. Hey, did you hear that, white boy? That's a heavy pill to swallow, huh? Read that. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau. There's no one more profane than the Edomites. Go ahead. Who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. 
There is not more. There is not more one profane in Esau, the vain fornicator. Just plug it in here. You get Psalms eighty-three. Who is the wicked? Who is his worst enemy? Who is he coming to kill first? Right. Go ahead. Give me that in Malachi chapter one, brother. Verse three. This is the book of Malachi, chapter one and verse three. And I hated Esau. And he what? And I hated Esau. Who's the most wicked? Who's he coming back to kill first? That's verse three. Yeah, go ahead. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Verse four. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and rebuild the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall and they shall call them the border of wickedness. The what? The border the of wickedness. The white man's the what? The border, border of wickedness. wickedness. Who's the most wicked? Who's his worst enemy? Who's he coming back to kill first? Right? Give me that in uh, Psalms 83. Read verse 2 and then read verse 6. This is a book of Psalms 83, verse 2. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult, tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So God has enemies. Who's his worst one? Who's the wicked? Who's he coming to kill first? Can we close the Bible and say, why would God want to send his son to kill whites? Come on now. Read that, brother. It's the book of Psalms, 83, verse 6. Let's, let's talk about the worst of God's enemies. The tabernacles of Edom. The tabernacles of Edom. And the Ishmaelites. And the Arabs, the Caucasians first, and the Arabs second. Don't think we forgot about you, Arabs, man. Right? Man, forget about what you Arabs did and what you do. I'm gonna keep looking at my phone until them drones hit that iron dome. Because we almost home. Hey man. Hey, hey, I got a question for you, man. You you got an American flag on, right? It says in God we trust. American flag, right? Okay, but you 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 represent that flag though, right? Okay, so you believe in the, the in God we trust? That's what the flag is about, right? God we trust. But the same nation that said in God we trust, the same nation that said in God we trust was the first nation to, to marry homosexuals. The same nation that said in God, the, in God we trust was the first nation to marry homosexuals. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, go smoke some fentanyl somewhere. They did Bring it up. Update news. Update news. The U.S. has shut down an undisclosed number of Iranian drones. So America's stepping in, just like the Bible says. America's stepping in. The drones are on the way. America has shot down a couple of them, right? An undisclosed number. All of them drones going to keep coming. They're sending decoys and everything. We're giving you live updates right now, man. Live updates. Right? Right? Oh, praise to the most high. Hey, man, how you feel about what's going on in the world today, man? It's good? The world is good today, huh? Damn. He doesn't feel anything. He's just an unsub insult. Incel. So you see America is stepping in. Give me a, uh, that's still, drop that, but give me a, uh, um, Revelation chapter 19, Revelation chapter 19, I think, start at verse 11. 
That's what I was trying to call for earlier. Go ahead. Just the book of Revelations 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. See, it said a white horse. That's that 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 army or, or military commander, also known as the Messiah. This is the part of Christ that Christians don't talk about. Him being a military commander coming to judge the nations and kill and subjugate. And they try to say, oh, well, prisoners of war. It's not just prisoners of war. In Deuteronomy chapter 25, this is for you Christians out there. In Deuteronomy 25, when we wanted to go to war against a nation and they said, no, we just want peace, we would take all of them as tributes and servants, not just their military. God judges nations. Because you had that bonehead God logic saying that, oh, he's only going to take the military in, in slavery or only uh, the, the enemies of slavery. No. A civilian is a part of a nation. A military member is a part of a nation. And God said, all the nation, all the na that nations have to serve, not the military of the nations. Give me that in Isaiah 16 and 12 one more time, just to prove that. The nation has to serve, not the military. The nations have to serve us, man. Go ahead, one more time. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 60, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 12. For the nation and kingdom. For the military. For the nation and kingdom. Hey, how do you guys feel about Iran sending drones to Israel? I know. But she got the uh, they're Arabic. She got the Shemaga. Won't even put her shoes on right. It's crazy. So it don't say the military has to serve us. It says these nations have to serve us. Go ahead. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. So that's a cut on God illogic, right? Now, back in Revelation 19, America's trying to intercept drones. And that's what's going to cause what? Russia to step in. All praises to the Most High. The drones are on the way. Just when you thought this war was simmering down, it's been brewing up. Drake dropped a diss on today. Hezbollah launched uh, rockets today. Iran seeing drones today. It's firing up in the world today. That Drake just was trash. But it was it was cool, but it wasn't Kendrick on flame Drake. Hey, what's going on, man? Oh, you, 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 we seen you before, man. I do? Yeah, what's going on, man? I was kind of new here. Nah, nah, we seen you before. We know your father. Do you? Yeah, <laughs> the father of the devil. Read that, brother. This is the book of Revelations, 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. That's the Messiah, right? Go ahead. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Woo. In righteousness he's going to make war. Go ahead. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Oh, he's coming back with vengeance. Go ahead. And on his head were many crowns. What does this mean? That he had crowns stacked up on his head? No. He took down the nations. He rendered them powerless. And he conquered to conquer. To set the Israelites up to rule the world. America is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. That's right. According to the Most High God. And all these nations in cahoots are getting taken down. And brick is going to be the one to do it. Then the bricks are going to get taken down. You got real drones. Then you got decoy drones. You got actual missiles. And you have decoy missiles. So no matter if America tries to intercept some of the drones, some of the drones are going to land and hit their target. And what are you going to do, Israelis? What are you going to, what are you Israelis going to do? There's only war there because the, the people of the land are not indigenous to that land. If the real Israelites were in their land, there would be peace. Right? 
So with that being said, I'm going to keep watching my phone until these drones hit the Iron Dome because it's almost time to go home, man. So repent, get your house in order, and watch and pray. And we might go back live later once we get some direct connects and attacks from these Iranian drones. We're going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, and we do so by Shima Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Come here, Sarah. Come here, Sarah.